I probably work 80 or 90 hour a week, which does cause some consternation in my wife and children. I was really, really lucky. They made more sacrifices than me. This isn't the easiest way to be profitable. But what made me feel happy about it is that I knew every day I was coming to work that there was a purpose. You know, we believe, and it's not just us, I think you know, the FBI believes that, that with rapid DNA, there can be a very dramatic reduction of crime in the United States. Almost one in five women are raped at some point in their life. But it's, it, it's a very small number of rapists. The average rapist commits about 12 rapes before they're caught. And so if we can be faster about DNA analysis, we can dramatically reduce the crime rate. Anything that's done for law enforcement and DNA identification in the United States is done in one in of about 200 laboratories. From purely a chemical point of view, that should only take on the order of three, four minutes. And it was taking six to 24 months. It made no sense. Because of that, DNA is only used in a very small percentage of crimes. Andy is a rapid DNA identification instrument. It allows a sample to go through a series of complex manipulations to get a DNA identification, and it does it quickly. From the Andy instrument, the DNA fingerprint would go through existing infrastructure to a federal DNA database. The process takes about uh, 94 minutes. So what we're trying to do is engineer out the places where humans could make errors. DNA is colorblind. There's nothing about the DNA that's making any assumption about who committed the crime. I think that when you're really trying to change the world, the world isn't so excited about the change and it doesn't really believe in the change. And I actually think that's a good prognostic sign. There are other applications, for example, in disaster victim identification. We'll do work to catch terrorists. We'll be better at corporate security. And then just like with computers and IT, it will keep getting better and better and better. In terms of the technology, I'm very challenged by it. It's something that has never been done. And so whenever we discuss the next concept, Richard always comes up with something I think is undoable. You know, I didn't think any of the asks were crazy. You know, Eugene was usually the one who came up with the solutions. When you, you stack up all the requirements of the strategy, it takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of unknowns, a lot of risks. So one of the beauties with designing and building a microfluidic device this big is no one had done it before. We designed the first chip and we thought it would work immediately put it together, and of course, it didn't work. So there were literally thousands of iterations over a few year period until we got something that worked. Most of the people I talked to said the idea of trying to take DNA test out of the lab, put it into the hands of non-technical users and make it 90 minutes instead of six to 24 months, I thought it was crazy, it would never work, that the system wasn't set up for that. And that was pretty much constant. If you set out doing something and everybody says, it's a no-brainer, it's gonna work, congratulations, it's probably not that important. So I think we're at a turning point today. Over the course of the next 18, 24 months, it'll go from today when it's happening you know, in a few spots to being commonplace. If we can take that one in five statistic, one in five women that are raped in their life and, and you know, first cut it by you know, a factor of 10 and then completely eliminate it, then all of this will have been worth it, will have really made the world a better place.